I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, welcome to a uh, trip down the rabbit hole, <laughs> uh, a journey into the Evergreens database. I'm Michelle Morgan. I'm the uh, system support specialist at Noble, the North of Boston Library Exchange. And uh, uh, just a, one slide about Noble. Uh, we're a consortium of 17 public libraries, seven academic libraries, and one special library, and we're 50 miles east of here. I, that might be east. I, didn't, I meant to check my compass, but anyway. <laughs> um, and we migrated to Evergreen in May of 2012. Um, I never look back, I hope. <laughs> uh, uh, just a little bit about this presentation. I, I don't intend it to be overly technical. Um, I was hoping to sort of convey some things that I wish I knew like way back in 2012 when we were first getting started um, and things that I learned along the way and found useful. I'm hoping to share where to find different types of data in the Evergreen database and talk about the database structure. Um, I don't intend to go through the whole database because that would take us till probably next conference. <laughs> uh, here's my disclaimer. I'm not a Postgres expert. Um, I generally learn things from the outside in. I, I learn what I need to know for what I need to do and hopefully it all comes together at some point. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of people in this room who know a lot more about the database than I do. <laughs> Um, so the database, it's a Postgres database, and I've linked to Postgres on this slide, um, and some qualities of Postgres is it's open source, uh, it's very powerful, it's scalable, and it has um, full text search functionality built in that Evergreen uses, and it's got a whole bunch of more qualities that I won't go into. Um, we're going to touch a lot on SQL, sometimes also pronounced as SQL. I'm not exactly sure which is the <laughs> accepted pronunciation. It's structured query language, and it gives you tools to um, manipulate the database. Um, you can use statements like create statements to create databases, tables, functions, things like that. Um, you can use the drop command to drop the same things. Um, which you need to do very carefully. Uh, and you can use alter to change structure in the database. Um, and in terms of data, you can use commands like insert, update, select, delete. You can probably guess what those do. Um, and delete, uh, you gotta be careful with because it, it removes data from the database, but not always, uh, which can be a good thing. Uh, so how does the database come to be? How does it get built? Um, this is a snapshot from the Git repository. Uh, what you see here is a picture, like just the very top of a whole bunch of SQL files that get executed when the database is built. Uh, there's lots and lots of them. I didn't count them, uh, but if you look at like the snapshot of a first, the first one here. Uh, if you look right here, there's a statement that says create schema evergreen. That's where it all begins. Uh, and then a whole bunch of other stuff is created. The structure is created. Uh, just one more snapshot of here, some data being inserted into the tables that were created previously. So that goes on for a long time when you're building an evergreen system. Uh, okay, so, so you have an evergreen system and you want to be able to get to the database. Well, you have to be granted access. Uh, and access needs to be granted by the server administrator. And depending on the circumstances, they may not grant you access for very good reason. Um, and I know you heard a lot about test systems at this conference. And one of the good things about them is if you build a test system, you are the server administrator, so you can do anything you want. You can grant yourself access. You can 
blow it away. You don't have to be afraid to poke around and, and just look at stuff. And um, fortunately, there are lots of tools uh, and more becoming available all the time to build test systems to make it doable for people who don't often like get into Linux systems or they just know a little bit of, of uh, knowledge and you can build a test system. You probably saw Blake's lightning talk and and his maybe his presentation at the new devs meeting where he went through the little script that he just wrote. And that's a, that's is a very powerful tool that doesn't have a really steep learning curve. So even if you've never considered that you'd be able to build a test system, chances are you, with a little bit of effort and help, um, you could get one running on a pretty powerful laptop. Um, and maybe you have someone more technical than yourself in your organization, and maybe they want to give it a try. Um, once the, you know, the initial steps are a little bit, you know, there's a whole bunch of things that you do that you do once and it's complicated, but after that, all the initial setup is done and you just have to do a couple of steps to, to start it up. Uh, so that, that ability is, is getting more accessible all the time. Uh, okay, so um, presuming that you have been granted access by your server administrator or yourself as the server administrator, uh, how do you actually get in there and look at the database? Um, PSQL is a command line uh, function. It comes with Postgres. If you're comfortable with the command line, you can use that. Uh, you know, it's terminal-based, character-based. Uh, if you prefer a GUI, these are there are just a couple of tools I listed here. Uh, PG admin is something you install on your workstation, and uh, you set up a connection to your database, and you can use that to browse and query and um, just look around that way. PHP PG admin <laughs> is another GUI tool, and that's installed on the server by your system administrator. In, in Noble, we've always been fortunate. Our, uh, ever since, since we started um, hosting our own system, our system administrator, Martha Driscoll, has always installed PHP PG admin. So we've had access from the beginning, which was, was hugely helpful to us. Uh, if you don't have a system, but you're still curious about where data lives, uh, there are dump schemas published on the Evergreen Wiki, and I'm going to see if I can open this up. Yes, okay. So um, the New Devs Wiki has, um, the New Devs group is, is, is doing a masterful job of trying to pull documentation together. Uh, as a section here on the Evergreen database schemas, but uh, the most recent one that was published on the wiki was, was for 3.2, and now we're 3.10 plus. <laughs> so as, as part of this presentation and as my commitment to the um, to it challenge, <laughs> this, this conference was to uh, see if I could create a current schema um, for for Evergreen. And I, I am halfway there. I was able to uh, create the schema on a test system. Um, IRC mailing lists were helpful uh, in finding out how it was done. It was done in the past using Autodoc, which is something you can install on your server. So that that's what I used. Not saying there, there are not different ways to do it, um, but it, so I did manage to create one. Let's see if I, but I have not been able to actually post it to the wiki yet. And I thought it was here somewhere. Oh, there it is. So I actually have the, it's an HTML file. It dumps it all into an HTML file. And, and this is sitting on my desktop right now, just waiting to be, uh, added to the wiki. I, 
I tried it. Um, I discovered I didn't have enough permissions, so I did email the web team to see if I could get more permissions. Um, so this is uh, this should be available soon, and it lets you uh, click on these links. It's just one big long page, but if I decide I want to see what is in the line item here, um, and I'll talk about the structure later, which this might make more sense. Um, and if I click through, I'll get information about that table in the database. Uh, so that's another way. Oops. Okay, back to the presentation. Uh, so just uh, a little more about these access methods. This is a, a snapshot of PSQL command line. Um, at the very top, you'll see the uh, query that I ran, uh, select star, which means all fields from config.copy status, which is where the copy statuses live in the database. Um, so that's what that looks like, but I don't, I, I prefer the GUIs, so I'm just going to go to the next slide. <laughs> Um, and this is uh, this, a view of the PG admin, the, the GUI that's installed on your uh, desktop. Uh, it's a little more, you know, GUI. <laughs> uh, but that's, that's not my preference either. So I'm going to pass over that to, oh, this is another, this is another snapshot from PG admin of the same query. This is the copy status table. Um, and how it appears there. Um, but I'm going to go ahead to PHP PG admin because I'm comfortable with that. Um, and here is that query, same query in PHP uh, PG admin. Uh, if we have if we have time at the end, I, I do have um, my test system running here and PHP PG admin is open so we can explore a little if there is certain data that people want to look at. Uh, so some concepts, um, we already mentioned schemas, uh, a schema is a collection of tables. So for evergreen, evergreen is the schema and the collection of tables are action, ac, ac which is acquisitions, um, asset, a whole, whole list of them. Uh, and tables are a collection of columns. Uh, also called fields. I call them fields a lot. Uh, queries, we already mentioned those a little. That's how you can get data in and out of the database and manipulate the data. Uh, excuse me. Views are things that look a lot like a table and you can use them like a table, but uh, behind the view, there is a query, um, also known as a function, that takes data from other tables on the fly and populates your view. Um, but if you look at it, it can look just like a table. Uh, so functions, functions can do a lot of things. They can do complex manipulation of the data, things that you need more than one or two lines of SQL to do. Uh, and then there are triggers. Uh, triggers happen Usually, uh, if, if a certain change is made to a row in the database, that table could have a trigger on it that says, if this happens, then do something else. And that often runs a function to make other changes. Uh, okay, so let's dive in a little bit anyway. Uh, so here's a list, just a snapshot of the schemas. Notice here's the ACK schema, um, actor, they're all listed here. Uh, tables, if I go ahead and, and look at the action schema, these are the tables inside that. Here is uh, circulation. I'm gonna use circulation as my example because that's pretty relatable. Um, circulation holds your checkout transactions, which is, um, a very common thing to, to think about. Uh, so if I look inside that circulation table, uh, these are a lot of the columns. There, there's too many than actually fit on the screen right now. 
uh, but there's uh, an ID, a unique ID for that, that, that row. Uh, it has things like exact start, which is when the transaction started, when the checkout happened or whatever. Um, yeah, usually when the checkout happened, not always. Uh, things like target copy, that is the item that got checked out. Um, as this uh, circulation transaction goes through its lifetime, it gets updated at various points in the circulation. Someone checks it in, the somewhere is the check-in time that gets filled in. Um, so all during this, uh, the life the life of this circulation, things get changed depending upon what happens at the CERC desk or in the OPAC to this um, transaction. Um, and if, if you have questions as we go along, you can feel free to ask and otherwise we'll look at them later. Uh, okay, so here is a, an example of a query. My test system has the Concerto database, which is very small. So you don't really have to worry about, sometimes on Postgres, you can run, run queries that are just too big. That's not a very good idea. <laughs> and everybody's done it. <laughs> um, but so on, on my yeah, test system, I wanna see how many checkouts are there that were due before January 1st, 2023. Uh, so if, I'm, if I run that query on my test system, I get this subset of the data. Notice that the due date, these were due back in 2014, and these are the only uh, transactions that fit that criteria. So that's an example of a very simple query. Um, so I talked about views before. Um, the circulation schema, I'm sorry, the action schema has a bunch of views, which um, just to remind you, they're, they're table-like things, but they're based on queries. Uh, so they, there is an, uh, an all circulation view. Um, now in Evergreen, you can age circulations as your circulations get, you know, your database fills up with circulations. You don't want the old circulations to be, you want to anonymize them. You don't want the patron information. And, and Evergreen has functions to do that. Um, when a circulation is anonymized, it gets removed from the action circulation table and gets the pertinent statistical information gets inserted into the action aged circulation table. Um, but you, probably want to, if you're doing statistics, you probably want to include those age circulations. So this all circulation view, I hope that's my next slide. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, has a whole bunch of statistical information uh, for the circulations, both the aged ones and the current ones. And this, I had to like cut this apart and put it in two rows and it's pretty small. Sorry about that. Uh, and I don't think I can make this bigger. Um, but what it does is it starts with a select fields from age circulation. And up here, it's, it does a union. So it selects a bunch of fields from age circulation. And then it selects a bunch of fields from circulation and it puts them all in one table or view that you can, can um, run your queries off of. Um, okay, so onto functions. Um, there's a lot of functions in Evergreen, um, lots. <laughs> uh, I was looking for a simple one to run, to look at, and I think, I forget which one I chose. This one is called all circ chain. Oh, that's right. Some of them are really, really long. This one is fairly simple. Um, what this one does is uh, 
When you have a circulation and a patron renews it, the first row in the circulation table gets closed. Well, it gets checked in and another row is created for the renewal circulation. So you can have, say you have an item that was checked out and renewed twice, you can have three rows in the circulation table that relate to that item. So what this function does is um, it loops around and it, it brings together those three rows so, so you can look, look at them as a single chain. And uh, lots of pieces of evergreen use this because sometimes you want to know when the original circulation started and the last circulation ended. <laughs> um, so that's an example of a function. Uh, okay, so triggers, um, we talked about triggers like that can, can get executed when a change is made to data in the database and you want other changes to result from that. And um, well, let's see which, again, these are the triggers that are on circulation, this table right here. Action is the schema and circulation is the table and triggers are what we're looking at. So I decided to look at uh, the circulation claims returned trigger. I'm actually not sure if that's the name of the trigger or the function. Uh, that's the function. I forget what the name of the trigger is, but the trigger calls this function. Um, and what this function does is if you're um, at the CERC desk and a patron says, I returned that item and you mark it claims returned, um, a few things happen. First, what happens to the circulation? Uh, the stop finds field in the circulation gets changed to claimed returned. Claims returned, sorry. Uh, and what this function does, uh, when that happens, it does a couple of things. It updates actor user, which is your patron, and it increments the claims return count in the patron record. Uh, the patron record has a field called claims return count, and that gets in incremented when they make an item claims returned. Uh, it also does the same thing if you mark an item claims never checked out. It updates a different field in the patron record. Uh, and the other thing that this function does, it's not really related to claims returned, uh, but if Notice this says if uh, new stop finds equals lost. So if you mark an item lost, patron says, I, I don't have it. <laughs> mark it lost, I'm going to pay for it. So you mark the item lost or the system marks the item lost through a, a trigger. Um, this is how the copies or the items status gets set to it says status equals three, which is the lost status. So that's the type of, that's a very simple example of what's happening in the background when you make changes in data in the evergreen. Uh, okay, so those are concepts. Um, I'm going to look at a few schemas. Uh, so just in general, the ACK schema, uh, that's a pretty concise schema that contains everything related to acquisitions. And I'm sure the acquisitions people know that data really well. <laughs> uh, then there's action. Uh, that's where circulation is, where we were looking. But it has all different tables and functions related to things that happen. Uh, it has your circulation transactions. Your hold requests are there. Uh, transits, if your items go in transit from library to library. That's where all the tables for the curbside functionality ended up. Um, emergency closings, um, processing tables are there. And uh, if you use surveys when you register a patron, that's where that data is. Uh, and also uh, patrons can opt into their circulation history and there's a separate table in that action schema where the um, patron circulation history lives. Uh, so action trigger, um, 
These are all tables related to uh, things like notifications, um, acquisitions, uses, action triggers for EDI. Uh, when you do things like email a BIP record to yourself from the catalog, that's an action trigger. Um, so this is where all like email notifications and stuff like that live. Um, okay, actor, that's where your patrons are. That's where your libraries are. Um, organizational units, those define your libraries. Uh, users would be patrons and staff records all in the same table. Uh, the library settings, also known as org unit settings, live there. Um, the assigned library settings, actually, as well as the user settings and workstation settings. Um, the Closed dates, like if you go into the client and say, I'm going to be closed on this holiday and enter that date, there's a table in there that contains that data. Uh, there's a whole table dedicated to patron library card barcodes because many, some patrons can have many barcodes over their, <laughs> their life. Um, similar thing with addresses. There's a separate address table that links back to patrons because patrons can have multiple addresses. There's also a user activity table uh, as patrons uh, do things like log into the OPAC. Uh, statistics are counted and entered into the user activity table. Or if they authenticate to an online service through Evergreen, that will get logged in user activity table. Uh, OK, asset, that's where your stuff is. Uh, your call number, records, items. Shelving locations are there, all the course materials tables, uh, statistical categories for items, located URIs are all there. Um, the item alerts, notes, and tags are in there. And there's a table called uh, asset copy template, which is actually the templates that are used in serials, not to be confused with what actually used to apply to your copies. So, fun fact. <laughs> uh, OK, auditor is an interesting table. Um, there are triggers in Evergreen such that anytime you make changes to certain tables, like, um, like an item, uh, Evergreen will say, I don't know who's, who's talking to. <laughs> it, will, uh, it will take a snapshot of that row in the database before you make the change and stick it in this auditor table, along with the time that it was changed, the user that changed it, and the workstation where it was changed. So that is a good um, thing to know about because you can track back when you're not sure what happened to something. Um, so that's a useful thing to know about. And there are, there are a certain number of auditor tables, you can add and remove them, but that's beyond the scope of this <laughs> discussion. Um, all right, so I already mentioned that. Okay, I'm not going to talk much about authority records because I don't know much about authority records, but they live in the authority schema. Uh, okay, so Biblio, that's where your mark records live, uh, and also where your reference table for the monograph parts that get linked to your items. Uh, and config is a big one. We could talk about config all week. Um, uh, that's where the item statuses live. Anything that's like uh, a definition or uh, the um, setting types, like we talked about the actor table that has library settings, but the config uh, schema has a table that defines what those types are and the um, the one back in Actor actually maps those setting types to the library or the user or the workstation. Uh, so the configs also contain rules like your circulation rules and your um, hold rules and also your standing penalties that get applied to patrons when they don't return their stuff. Uh, Okay, the container schema contains all your buckets, your record buckets, your 
uh, copy buckets or item buckets, uh, and your user buckets and the carousels, additional tables for carousels are in there also. Uh, so Metabib is interesting. Uh, that contains all the indexed data from the MARC records that are in Biblio record entry. And there's a whole bunch of functions and triggers and full text search functionality that comes into play to create those. We might, we'll look at a sample of that later. Um, is that where? Oh, yes. And the meta record information is there. So if you have <clears throat> records that uh, uh, should that are grouped together because they're the same title, but they're different formats. <clears throat> Those are all linked to a single meta record, and that um, map is in the meta bib schema. Uh, okay, so money. Uh, this is the money. Money schema is where all the fines, lost billings, um, billings and payments related to patrons. So patron loses an item, they're going to get a billing uh, in a billing table. If they pay it, then there, it's going to be an entry in a payment table uh, to offset that. <clears throat> okay, permission. Um, this is where the list of permissions is, where the permission groups are defined. Um, the, and then there are maps that map uh, individual permissions to users and map individual permissions to permission groups. Uh, so I, um, I don't remember if I included a slide with examples, but we'll find out as we get there. Uh, okay, um, rating is a schema. I think the only thing that's in there is the statistical popularity badges that you can use in the catalog to to like bump up popularity of items. Uh, and then there's a reporter schema that holds all your report definitions or templates, all the folders, all the output, and a schedule that tells the system when to run this report, who to send it to, whether to run it again when this one is finished. That's all tracked in the reporter schema. Uh, okay, the search schema has lots of stuff related to search. Uh, that's where the uh, Sims Bell dictionary, the did you mean stuff lives. Um, and there's lots, lots and lots of functions in there uh, related to search. Uh, serial is all things serials except for the templates. <laughs> um, and I'm not a serials expert either. Uh, and then Vandalay is uh, where all the mark import export uh, data tables live. It has record queues, match sets, merge profiles, and there's a se session tracker in there when you're looking in the client and looking at, how, at the progress of your sessions that is actually tracked in a table in the database. Okay, I think I came to the end of the alphabet, except for this list of schemas that I'm not going to talk about, but they're there. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's look at a few examples and some, I guess, more concepts. Uh, the, there are lots of unique identifiers in Evergreen Tables. ID or a code is a comment is a uh, column in many tables that helps like identify the data in that table to other places. So uh, things like uh, the copy status, it has an ID. Uh, and anytime you want to refer back to that status, um, you do it by ID and you link link data together that way. Um, so the these uh, the ID or the code column is unique. You can't have two of them in the database; otherwise, they wouldn't link very well. Um, and the foreign key is is um, I guess that that linking I'm describing is sort of a bad description of the foreign key. Uh, Let's see, example. That might have been a note to myself that, <laughs> that I didn't follow through. Uh, oh, no, it isn't a note. It was a note to myself. Um, the next slide, I recycled um, a slide from a presentation that I did um, a few years ago on action triggers. I think it was one of the online conferences. Um, 
just it's just sort of illustrates the linking. Uh, so this is an action trigger event, which has an ID, which is unique, um, but it links to an event definition by an ID. So if I follow that down, this is the event definition that it links to. This is ID 381, and that one's called hold expires from shelf soon. Um, and there are all sorts of uh, unique identifiers in here that link to other tables with those, with additional data for those identifiers. So there's not going to be a quiz on this. So you don't have to study it too close. Uh, okay, As, um, let's see. So I want to look at a, a few examples um, in the database. Talked a little bit about settings. Um, the tables that uh, take, that are involved in settings, whether it be library settings, user settings, or workstation settings, they all have the same structure. Uh, for example, um, a workstation setting, your, uh, the workstation that you log into to do your work in the client in Evergreen has a workstation ID. You have to register it before you log in. And <clears throat> it has settings associated with it as you say, oh, save this column, make this, check off this checkbox and remember what I did. Um, so there's a, we talked about the config schema that has a workstation setting type. Um, the actor workstation table would say, would have what your workstation is called. And the actor workstation settings table would link those two together. So um, if I ran this query, uh, what did I do? Okay, my query seems to refer to user settings rather than workstation settings. So change these workstations to user because <laughs> um, this query is actually in user setting, but it's the same structure. So this query uh, says, show me the username of this um, person in the user table, the type of setting and the value of the setting um, and get the data from uh, the actor using set user setting table, which links it all together, and then get me some information from the setting type from config and the user, um, and sh and only look at the user who is NOBMM. So that would give me, and that is really small. Sorry about that. <laughs> Uh, so that gave me, I asked for a username, and that's going to be the same for all these rows. But um, for this user, I there is a setting, OPAC hold notify, and the value for that setting for that user is phone and email. So I want to get my, my hold notifications with a phone call and an email. Uh, there's also a setting called staff client catalog record view default. That means when I am in the staff client and I look at a record, which one of those tabs do I want to be on when I open the record? Um, and it's the OPAC view. So I mean, just anytime you click and save something in the client, it's going to save you a, either a workstation setting or a user setting. Uh, all right, so here's a, just a quick snapshot of um, tables from permissions. So the perm list, uh, this lists all the permission codes and a description, which I know there are people working on very hard to fix those. <laughs> uh, the permission group tree, uh, the profiles is assigned in this table. Here's the name. You can recognize users, patrons, and staff as examples. And they have um, a permission interview interval uh, and other data associated with it. Uh, and this table, the permission group perm map links these permissions from the permission list to the um, permission profiles in the group tree. So 
for group one, if I look up here, that's users, that group has perm one, which is OPAC login. Um, and the depth means that we can have that for the whole system. So there's huge mappings that, that map uh, things like a group to a permission. Uh, let's see what else do I have. Uh, just so did a, a quick look at what the um, index tables in the Metabib schema look like. There are tables called keyword field entry, author, title, subject, series, field entry. And when you save a bib record, a whole bunch of triggers and functions run in Evergreen to take apart the data and create a field like this. So here's the value of my title, and here are all the bits and pieces that I'm going to use for indexing. Um, and the Postgres full text search uses that data to find things when you search the catalog. It's a very hand wavy explanation. <laughs> um, I wanted to include a oh, we're running out of time, really. Um, maybe I won't say anything about this. <laughs> but this is the money, just quickly, the money table. Um, it, it is very complicated. Uh, and so I mean there's a billable transaction that can be either a checkout or a grocery bill. Um and associated with that are one or more billings. Like they lose, they they get overdue fines, so that's a billing. They get another overdue fine, that's a billing. They lose the item, that's another billing. Um, so those get added on the billing side. Um, and then there are many, many, many ways that they can pay. Um, and all those, they go in the OPAC, um, pay by credit card, you get a payment, which offsets the billing, and on and on and on it goes. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I'm not going to talk about views because <laughs> those are complicated. Uh, oh, look, questions. <laughs> so I know that's a lot of information, but it's just intended to maybe give you an idea of, of where stuff is. And um, are there any questions? Everybody understands the database perfectly. <laughs> um, just let's see. So I do have, I do have one of my little uh, test systems oh, let me go that up. running on this server, and so here's this is PHP PG admin, um, and here's the Evergreen database, and of course it logged me out. Um, so here are our schemas, uh, and if I click on where was I? Action. I like this interface because you can really explore. Uh, so I clicked on action and I click on circulation and here are all my fields. I could, no, I don't, I don't suggest you do this on a production system, but I could browse it and this will show me everything that's in the Concerto database is small, so there's not a huge amount. Um, and it lets me edit a row. Uh, this is great for testing stuff because sometimes um, you probably have tried to test things where there isn't the data in the database isn't there and you kind of want to, I mean, you could go through the client and do everything, but you know, you just want to have an item that has a certain status. So you know, I'm going to go in and make one. <laughs> um, so let's see. Any I'm happy to answer questions or maybe go home and take a nap. <laughs> oh, the triggers in the circulation table? Sure. Uh, 